Jake, how much more comfortable are you in this offense? I mean, you caught every ball that came your direction yesterday, including the one you used your helmet to help uh, pin in for the catch. Uh, yeah, I think with as the games keep going on and, you know, I get keep getting more reps and more experience, I just keep getting more comfortable and more confident with every rep in every game. How would you compare yourself right now, Chick, as a blocker to, say, the beginning of the season? I'd say definitely a, a lot better just because um, – Compared to now, you know, I'm just completely confident with knowing what I'm doing on the field, like knowing who I'm going to, knowing where my combos are going. So I say it's significantly better than at the beginning of the season. Along, my bad. Along those lines, we see you starting to play some fullback. How has that, you know, how have you accepted that transition and what has been the key to be able to do that in addition to your, your tight end duties? Uh, for me, that's just really embracing, you know, my role as, as being a versatile player. I think that's one of my biggest strengths. So for me, just being able to line up in any formation, you know, line up in any you know, place in the backfield, fullback, be able to block from there or catch passes from there. I think that's a, a big strength. So uh, just pretty much just embrace that role. You know, you know, a lot of, not a lot of guys, you know, want to, you know, just run through the hole and, you know, be a lead blocker. But embracing that role um, has been really fun for me and just, you know, finding different ways for me to get on the field and help the team. Has that been a year long process? Like, how is that going? Because it seemed like, like we just all of a sudden within the last three or four weeks saw you there. Uh, I feel like. No, nah, I mean, I think we we had a couple of things, you know, when we back in the fullback position earlier in the year. But, uh, yeah, we just decided to come back to it now. Can you yes. talk us through the, the two-point conversion catch? Um, yeah, I mean, that was really just all reaction, all reaction to the ball. I saw the ball was out and just reached my hand out. And then I tried to find a place to, you know, keep it secure, and I just pinned it on my helmet. And I'm sure you're preparing the same in a way, but how good has it been? How much have you enjoyed more opportunities being a bigger part of this offense, uh, you know, last couple of weeks? Um, it's definitely, you know, I, I'm a very appreciative that the, that the coaching staff, you know, Ryan, you know, get, putting trust in me and just allowing me to go out there and, you know, Don plays up for me to make plays. Speaking of that trust with Ryan, was there a particular play in a game or maybe a particular day in practice where you felt like you you had earned his trust that he was going to come to you more often? I don't I can't remember like a specific, you know, time, but it was something that was just, you know, over, you know, from the time I got here, you know, to now is just something that's just been gradually increasing over and over again. Um, I think with me, uh, I have taken a big, bigger step more towards the midseason to now in terms of just knowing everything, knowing the offense. I think that's that's one of the main reasons I'm able to get out on the field a lot more now. It's been a minute since this team lost three games in a row, I think about four years. Have you guys taken a hit with, with your confidence at this point? Uh, no, we, we know what we, who we are. You know, every game we're still going to go out, we're still going to play Titans football, you know, we're going to run the ball, we're going to play defense, and that's who we are. You know, we're in a three-game losing streak, you know, we got to get out of that, but we're going to stick to what we do. I think, I think it's been from you from, I guess, a physical, physical standpoint. You know, you know, your college season would have been over by now. Now you've still got weeks to go. I mean, how have you handled that? And what'd you do maybe to kind of get ready for you know de de December and, de and January? I uh, really just watch what the vets are doing, seeing what the vets are doing to take care of the body, because you know obviously they've been doing it for a long time. A lot of my stuff is just getting in the cold tub, massages, um, doing extra rehab and stuff, and then lifting. When you get two or three guys hanging on you, what's what's the key to sort of keeping your legs going and getting an extra yard or two in those situations? Oh, uh, just fight. I mean, it's just in your head, you know, the willpower to just keep going, I think. You always had that? Or that yeah, I feel like I've always had that as a football player. You feel like you had that type a, of mindset. extra situations of that yesterday? It seemed like two or three times you had three or four guys on. Yeah, I mean, um, when my usage is going to go up, I'm obviously going to have many more times, you know, with guys tackling me. And I feel I always feel like it's, I, I don't I don't personally want to go down from the first guy, so it's going to take a lot of guys to tackle me. When you look back at yesterday, and you, and you and you look at the score and, and the ugliness that ensued, do you, can you still look at that game and say we did more to beat ourselves than they did to beat us? I mean, we completely you know beat ourselves in that game. Having four turnovers is is not gonna is not gonna win you the game. So. Um, this game is about you know taking care of the football and then getting turnovers and you know we didn't do that yesterday and I feel like we were moving the ball down the field against them many times you know we we're feeling very comfortable but at the end of the day if you turn the ball over four times you're not going to win the football game. Just about everybody said yesterday they didn't feel like last week was a distraction but now that you're officially through the week yesterday happened do you guys have to kind of 
take stock again here and realize where you are, what's in front of you, what's yet to accomplish, and refocus in that regard? I mean, yeah, we got to do that, but also for us, we just got to take it, you know, day by day. I mean, we can't just, you know, keep dwelling on the past. I mean, the past is the past. You know, we got to keep moving forward. So we just got to take it day by day and then just, just try to keep getting better and finding ways to win the football game. As you see your involvement increase, like how has Coach Downing been as far as like giving you more and more? Because I know back in, before you got here, he had a really severe interest in you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how so. have you seen like that process? How has he been in, in, in getting you more involved and, you, you know, coming up with different ways to get you the ball? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've just been finding ways, you know, plug me in different spots. You know, they've just been experimenting a lot of stuff since I've got here. And I feel like we finally found, like, a common, you know, middle ground where I can feel comfortable with doing certain uh, stuff. And now I feel like I'm playing a lot more towards my strengths. You talked through the touchdown, nice too, as you kind of helicoptered in the end zone. Have you had to <laughs> replay of that one? Yeah, I mean, um, again, that was just another reaction thing. Just caught the ball, and I saw the guy going low, and I knew I needed to get in the end zone. And the only way was to go over top of him, so. That's how that happened. Does that hurt less when you land in the end zone as opposed to anywhere else on the field? I, I, I ain't gonna lie, when I landed, I was like, it felt like I bounced up super quick, so it, it didn't hurt at all. <laughs> how much this week, uh, I mean, especially during the, maybe the recent slide, have you found yourself trying to keep young guys up? Mm -hmm. You've been through a lot of NFL seasons, ups and downs. How much are you trying to lift spirits of young guys and keep, their, keep them from getting down? Um, like the same thing I said before during camp, if they were down, um, just keep improving, keep trying to get better. Um, if you think about it and dwell on the negatives too much, it can really affect your game for the long run. We still have a, a games that we need to win and games where we need those young guys to play good. You seem surprised when they walked you off the field What's that process like? What did they tell you about what they saw that prompted them to take you off for what was a concern? Yeah, um, they just seen my head hit the ground, and then they see me kind of lay there. Um, so, I mean, you know, they just did the regular protocol of calling it, and then they take you in the tent, um, ask you a couple of questions, you know, you know, what time of day it is, what time of the game it is, and then um, if you're good to go, you're good to go, or if you're not, then you'll be down. Were you laying there because of the – it was, it, was, it, was, it was my knee. Uh, I was laying there because my knee, and then, uh, I mean, but I figured that, you know, they saw me roll, hit the ground, that they might have they might have saw me just hit my head. Yep. You're supposed to know what time it is. I mean, it's pretty tough. I just <laughs> I just try and gauge between 12 and 3 o'clock, somewhere around there. <laughs> right. You've been on the team four years, correct? Mm -hmm. So yep. you were on the team the last time they lost yep. three games in a row. Um, I think it was 8-2018 was the last shows before me. I okay. came in 2019. So, so, it's your, so, I mean, this is the first time mm -hmm. you've gone through this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty tough. Um, you know, I think the worst that we've been in was 2-4, and four, and that was my rookie year um, when we started then. But we didn't have three losses in a row. But um, the thing that we just got to do is just hone in on the details and just play better. Um, guys, just do your job and then let, let, the, let the defense work for you or let the offense work for you. Amani, you say it's tough, but at the same time, you're still in first place by mm -hmm. two games. You're 7-6. Yeah. Right. You have a chance to punch a ticket to the playoffs. Do you guys have to remind yourself of that here, that there's a lot to play for over the next few weeks? Yeah, there's definitely a lot to play for. I mean, that's just something that we, we always talk about. Um, we, don't, we don't shy away from that. We know where we are. Um, but just as a whole, we know what we're capable of, and we know that we just need to play better, and um, that's just what we, we hold ourselves to that standard. With these type of times, like that's when your character, like what you're really about, comes to the surface. And your description, like, what is this team about? What's the character of this team? Um, I mean, we're, we're a great team. You got guys who love ball, um, guys that will fight. They fight every game till the end. I mean, we got guys out there on defense that were still, you know, playing hard as if, you know, we still had a chance to win um, the last couple minutes. So, I mean, the, the culture that we have here is great. The players that we have here is great. The coaching staff we have, we just got to make sure that we just lock in a little more. Um, details, preparation, and then, um, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, just win when you're one-on-ones. So you guys were going well. Seemed like the defense was getting lots of turnovers. Ball was finding you guys. Mm -hmm. That seems to have dried up during this little slide. Why, why do you feel like that is? Um, you know, I think it's just making the plays. I think early in the year we were making plays that were coming our way, um, and then recently, you know, the guys are in position. It's just you know they're just not winning. Um, whether the case may be, just you know honing in on you know individual work during practice and um, maybe working a couple more techniques um, that we could help us out, but. I mean, at the end of the day, it just comes down to you versus another player. And then um, as a whole defense, just being our 11 versus their 11. 35 points, 36 points allowed the mm -hmm. last two games. How, how dissatisfied, I guess, are you guys as a defense with that, given what you'd been doing earlier in the year? Yeah, it's definitely not what we want to do, definitely not our standard and you know, where we hold ourselves to as a defense. Um, I mean, our goal is to, you know, no matter what happens, wherever we are in the field, is to get off the field. 
um, find the resolve to get the drive stop. And if they're in the red zone or if they're in field goal range, you know, that's, uh, that's all they get is three points. What has to change to, to, get, what has to, change to, to maybe change the results? Um, I think just, just the details, um, preparation for the game. Um, you know, some there's mistakes here and there, uh, every other play, not just from everyone, but could be from a couple guys here and there. But, you know, just honing in on the details and then just being in tune with what our goal is for the week. Derek and Jeff both thought leaders stepping up was mm -hmm. going to be key to you guys turning this around through adversity. You were very vocal mm -hmm. in training camp about wanting to take that step as a leader in mm -hmm. this defense. So what do you personally feel like you can do this week or some of these guys can do this week to lead this group back down the right direction? Um, being positive. Um, there's a lot of times, you know, we got a lot of young guys in the group, so it's pretty easy for them to, you know, last three games we've lost so they and depending on how they feel about how they played you know that's that's besides the point it's all about moving forward um and there's more opportunities out there i mean if you go out next week and you get you know pbus picks forced fumbles like i mean the last that might erase your last game obviously it's still there but um that feeling will be erased at least but is it the main thing is just go out there and just keep trying to improve and just get better slot cornerback you're your spot now for the rest of the season, you think? Is that how you're approaching things? I mean, whatever, wherever they need me at. Um, I mean, I played it when I was in college. I played it when I first got here, and I've always kind of made sure I kind of knew what was going on. So um, I feel comfortable there. Um, I like being there as well. So whatever they need me at. Did you watch Justin Herbert in the Chargers offense last night? Yeah, I did. He was, he was slinging it around. Yeah, he was doing a great job. I um, mean, think he was like 35 for 40 or something, about 350 plus yards. So, I mean, great quarterback. You know, we, had, we have a good challenge ahead of us. How about the rest of their weapons and what you're going to have to deal with as a secondary? How good are they there? Um, they're real good. I mean, whenever they have Mike, Mike, um, Mike out there and they have um, Key and Allen out there together, I mean, it's pretty tough, tough to stop. So um, we've got a good challenge ahead of us, um, good skill group of guys, and I, th I think we're going to be ready to go. Yards against you guys. What do you have to do to get out of that funk and change that this weekend? I'm um, honing on the details. Great communication. Communication is a, a, a key thing that you know we want to continue to improve on. Um, and then just having trust. Having trust that you know the guy is going to be inside to help you out, and just also knowing where your help is. Road, four games left, and try and hold on to your spot on top of the division. Well, the challenge is just getting back to eliminating bad football. You know, I mean, we um, <clears throat> we have too many opportunities to to do good things, and uh, we have to eliminate bad football. Um, you know, whether it's turnovers, whether it's those turnovers and sudden change, you know, affecting the quarterback or, or not being able to um, affect their quarterback, not being good at the end of a half situationally. Um, you know, just, just those things where, you know, we have to be, you know, whether they're not lined up and we're, but we're not ready to go, you know, that, that would be another instance. So. There's a lot of those things, and that's that's the challenge. It's not looking ahead to how many games we have left. It's, you know, making sure that we eliminate bad football and that we we find ways to to go out there and play complementary, which uh, we've done. Uh, certainly haven't done it here recently. What type of character you want this time of adversity to show that this team has? Well, I mean, we all have a have a have a choice. You know, we have a power to choose how we walk in here. I've said that. And how we approach this uh, would like them to, you know, all of us to, to make sure that um, we're doing our part, um, you know, to fix the things that have to be fixed, to recognize the good things, to eliminate uh, or fix the bad things, and then, you know, rid ourselves of, of the things that, that get you beat, which are turnovers and, um, you know, mistakes and, you know, just the things that happened yesterday, not playing complimentary. Eliminating the bad football, is that something you can clean up on the practice field, meeting rooms? How, how do you Well, I mean, I hope so. Game? I mean, but you get to a point now where, you know, you're late in the season, guys are beat up. You know, how much can you realistically uh, practice, how many reps you can practice, how many bodies that, that you have practicing with. Um, so I hope that it's a combination of both, Jim. I hope that it's a combination of, uh, you know, taking the meetings, you know, and being able to, to walk through, taking the walk through corrections and using the ones that we have in speed and practice and, and hitting them. You know, there was, you know, a lot of things that showed up in the game that, you know, we fixed throughout the week. And then unfortunately there was things that, that we didn't and we, and we weren't able to hit it or, or use it to our advantage. When you're trying to gauge the overall physical well-being of your team, 
I mean, how much do you rely on the information that you have through, you know, tracking devices and things these days, and how much is it you just like or don't like what you see on the field on Sunday? Um, well, you, you talked about management, and then, I, and then you talked about the tracking, and then it was to what I don't like or, like, what I like. I'm trying to view, like, as far as speed or – You feel like – I mean, do you – do you say, I, based on the numbers we have, I expect we're going to be really physical and fresh and things on Sunday, and, oh, my gosh, we're not? Or, or Well, I mean, I think you try to view, um, you know, the health of the team about how they, you know, each individual player, uh, what, what they look like, what they feel like. Um, you know, everybody's beat up this time of year. You know, we have to try to do everything that we can do physically to, to get their bodies back. They have to they have to – do their part as well, and then manage practice, you know, accordingly. How beat up is uh, Jeffrey right now, Mike? Do you feel like that's been kind of dragging him down recently, the ankle? Well, he's, you know, Jeff's not at 100%. Um, you know, that's something that we've had to manage, and that, you know, I appreciate his his willingness to, to help us and, and manage it and, and get through and, and do everything that he possibly can, you know, to get to the games. Nico was a guy that you know really affected things. It seemed like in going after the quarterback. Is he any closer to being able? to I hope return? so. I hope he is. Could use everybody. I know you're a, a teacher first, and in, in, in a lot of ways, I was asking you yesterday. I did a bad job. But do you, do you ever change things where you're? I, do you ever come into a meeting with them angry, light them up, anything like that, or is that not part of the way you operate because you're a, a teacher? Well, I mean, I think my job is to make sure that, you know, we're, we're pointing out those things. Um, I think there's a couple different ways to go about doing it. Um, and I've done it a multitude of ways. I've done it differently. Um, you know, sometimes the, the things I say, Paul, uh, somehow in a, in a twisted, warped way may make, uh, may make me feel better. I don't know if that makes, you know, the, the situation better. So I've, I've tried to balance that. I, I, really, I really believe, um, you know, that I have. I, I, I think what, they, you know, what you see is what you get. You know, I, I think that I'm always going to try to be honest with them. I'm always going to try to point out the things. Um, you know, but I do believe that my tone as, as the head coach of this football team is important. I think it's, you know, again, trying to uh, come in here today after a loss, after three losses where we're at, you know, is still – it's still important to make sure that you know we're, we're we're all held accountable, that we're doing things that that are positive, but also the outlook has to be positive as well. That twisted way, maybe have a degree of venting to it at times. Um, I mean, I don't. I'm, I'm not. I don't want to go in there and vent. I want to go in there and make sure that um, that there's a clear vision uh, of what we have to do. Uh, find out who we have available and. And get them ready for the football game. That that's it. Last week you talked about you know rationalizing where you were at. You had two tough losses to the Chiefs and mm -hmm. Bengals, and then and then a bad day in Philly. Do you take that same approach to this game of rationalizing? How no, there, I mean it's pretty easy to see if you just follow the keys and understand the the turnovers, the inability to um, you know affect the quarterback, our, our inability to to get into a. We answered back in the first half offensively. We didn't uh, in the second half. Um, you know what I mean? And then by the time we got back on track offensively, it was just too little too late. Um, thought there were some good things in the, in the run game. Thought there were some good things in the red zone. I thought we had a good flow. We, you know, to start the game, we went on a drive. We, we, we complimented each other. The plays complimented one another. Um, you know what I mean? There's not a whole lot of, to, to ration. I think it's just reality of that when you do those things in, in this league, you have no chance to win. Yesterday, kind of what you envisioned when, when you drafted him? And brought him uh, yeah, there were some good things. I think the statistics, you know, probably um, cloud some of the overall play. There were some, some mistakes that, uh, you know, I felt like um, he made. And, but, you know, there was some, there was some production, uh, which was good, and some corrections that he made and, you know, the execution in the red zone. Um, but but there were just you know some other things that you know didn't really help us. How unique is his ability to 
stay on his feet and keep grinding when he's got two or three guys hanging on him? Yeah, he's got, you know, I mean, good play strength with the football in his hand and, um, you know, went in there, ran behind him some, ran, you know, you know, worked some of the other run schemes and, you know, again, plays on the punt team. So we're asking him to do a lot, um, but it's just some of the other details that have to get cleaned up. And, you know, there's some really cool finishes and pile, pile pushes in there and, you know, 20 second play where, you know, guys are into it and tuned in later in the game. You know, Dennis is down there running in there, you know, trying to push the pile on a pass as the first one out of the stack. So there's a lot of good things from that regard. Um, you know, but just the overall execution and, and the flow of the game wasn't good enough. You've got a three and out 10 times coming out of halftime during this three game losing streak. You've had negative 33 yards on the opening drive of the third quarter. Is that is that is that a failure to adjust coming out of halftime? What's 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 going wrong? No, we had, we had some egregious uh, penalties and, and mistakes. So, I mean, it's first and twenty-two. Um, give up a sack and uh, third and twenty-seven, and we don't block for a screen that nobody's going to convert. But hopefully, we can help the punt team and uh, get the screen started, uh, so then we can use our punter. To, to maybe uh, change field position. Well, so, for the season on, on <clears throat> 10 does, um, you know, evaluating, you know, everything. It's it's execution. It's it's our ability to 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 coach them and make sure that the details are fixed. And you know, it's just not one thing. Bill Cole particularly hard on himself after the, his shortcomings yesterday. Is that kind of the reaction you want to see from guys uh, coming out of a loss like that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just think that, uh, you know, it means a lot to everybody. It means a lot, you know, to Dylan. He's got to play better, um, you know, so, um, you know, we'll try to make those corrections and, and see, uh, see where we go next week. Well, what do you run race you do first time back and are you hopeful you get, uh, maybe trailing back in the mix at practice this week? Um, you know, we'll see where trailing is. I'm not going to you know, comment on anybody that's. Uh, in, in the protocol, um, that, that's not my job. My job is to tell him to be honest with the doctor and the trainer and to check in on him to see how he's feeling. It's not my position to predict whether we'll get him back at practice. Um, as far as Racy, I thought that you know, Racy put a lot of work in uh, mentally in, in his time away. So from an a assignment standpoint, it was good. Uh, I think probably knocking some of the rust off on a special teams. Um, and then I think physically it came out okay. But with that, <clears throat> going back to Dylan and how he took that situation, uh, do you like find yourself when you're talking to a guy like that, you have to remind them, hey, you know what, on top of the division, still have control of your own destiny or even have to remind yourself of that? Um, yeah, maybe. But I mean, we have to play better. We have to, again, eliminate the bad football. Um, and, you know, remind him that he, that he wasn't the only one. I mean, nobody did anything that was good enough, consistently enough uh, for us to win. You've been emphasizing the, the formula, Mike, and, and the importance of the run game and the formula. How, how do you get so far away from Derek after, after 96 yards in the, in the first quarter? Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, I think that the way that the, the, the game went, um, you know, again, we, we tried to, you know, I think on, on the one possession, I uh, tried to, you know, get a play to Chig. Um, went, he went eight yards behind the line of scrimmage, which wasn't what we wanted to do. We tried to get a catch and run, and then, you know, that led to a three and out. And then, obviously, in the, in the second half, you know, with the way that the game went, you know, we, we couldn't, um, you know, it was tough to commit to, to Derek in the run game. You guys have been consistent in preaching the next man up mantra. You've had success with that. But is there a challenge now to keep the positivity you're talking about and the confidence level high when essentially the message here last week from ownership was that the roster isn't good enough to, to keep doing that this season? I don't think we have any other choice. Eh? It's, it's what we have to do. Let's figure out who we have and get them ready to go play a game, take care of the football, try to have some ball production on defense, you know, it's been a long time since we've, you know, created a turnover or, or hit anybody hard enough to knock the ball loose or intercept it or tip it up in the air and catch it. 
Chargers last night, and what, what are the challenges they present to your defense? Well, I mean, they throw the football, and you know, they're going to commit to it. They've got you know, young quarterback with a with a live arm and uh, good skill players. Like you know, we'll, we'll have to worry about the the Chargers and, and our ability. We got to fix uh, correct some mistakes here today. The down trail situation from a distance was pretty scary. How, how is he doing? Today? He's doing much better. Thank you. Um, you know, I don't think you know Don Don Trail won't be. Um, available this week, obviously, and so um, you know we'll continue to monitor him. I've seen him and, and today, and so he's doing good, which, which is the most important thing. How difficult is it this time of year, Mike, to plug and play guys when you get towards the end of the season? Being able to find guys who you can rely on. You know, they come in on Wednesday, got a couple of days to prepare and learn a game plan and you know, figure out adjustments and checks, and you know. Like John Reed last week, or Terrell Basham, or or anybody else that's going to come in this week. You know that that's that's the job that we have to try to get them ready to go. Sure, you talked about new side and footwear choices, but still you had several guys that that were slipping all all over the place. What do you? What kind of discussion is there before? What kind of discussion is there after? When it seems to be a factor, particularly in the missed tackle. You choose that work. I mean. I'm changing the side. I, you know, we get, we get 18 pairs of cleats in there that everybody can wear. And shoes will work. You'll stay on your feet. Well, you have you to bring in another. Before Mike, so how come guys don't don't get it? How come guys slip? I, I, I you know, what I mean, I, I don't know. I, you need to bring in another quarterback uh, this week. Yeah, we'll take a look squad. at it. Yeah. Chestnut, Ben. You mentioned no failure. Does that mean Chestnut maybe in the mix more again this week? And how's he been? With his recent opportunities. Well, did some good things on on the kickoff last last week. Um, had the the kickoff returns, you know, this week. It, you know, hit it up in there. Got us a decent average. Um, you, you know, I mean, we'll work him into the punt team, and so I think that Julius is going to try to do everything he can if his opportunity presents himself this week. So, you know, we've liked Julius since since he got here. Very willing, very conscientious, great teammate.